Bob here. Today I want to show you how to replace the bearings on a DJI Inspire 1. Before we start, we need to talk about some tools, uh, some tread locker, a container to put the screws in, a large freezer bag, we'll show you what that's for later on, a 9 16 inch socket with an extension, 6 inch extension that's used to uh, support the bearing as we remove it and because I'm doing this by, by myself I need a clamp in order to hold everything up as I use it. Some tape can use to mark what we're working on. Some two millimeter Allen wrenches. A large one and a smaller one for those tighter fits. A eighth inch drift and hammer. An exacto knife some jeweler size screwdrivers to remove the clip, a needle nose pliers, a couple of 5 inch Allen wrenches which are used to uh, work with the uh, tool I have to remove the bearings, some tweezers, uh, you see a magnifying glass there. Uh, this is a half inch socket which is also used to support the bearing as we remove it. magnifying glass to find those missing parts. <laughs> and this is the tool that I had to make. It's basically nothing more than a um, than a two inch number 10 Allen head bolt with a with a um, nut and a couple of washers, one large fender washer. And that is used to push one of the bearings out and to push both the bearings back on. So we'll see that in operation in a few minutes. So before we start, I've done two of these already. They're marked with tape, so I want to mark the third one so I know I've worked on it, so I don't do the same one twice. And we're going to use our two millimeter Allen wrenches and remove the six bolts that hold the motor housing basically to the to the arm and there's two short ones on the inboard that's what I'm working on right now the inboard and four larger ones or longer ones on the outboard that's actually holding the motor put a cardboard box under it and remove the last bolt. The reason the box is to take the pressure and the weight off of the motor arm as I disassemble it. So now I'm just going to remove the dust shield. Now that's held on by some sticky substance and it is reusable. You want to be careful taking it off so you don't tear it. So I'm using a, an X-Acto knife in order to start the removing it from the edge and then the, and just remove it. Then you're going to try to give yourself as much room as possible by pulling out the motor housing and the wires so you have enough room to work and you know, without pulling the wires off of its connections and then we're going to remove that clip there's a there's a c-clip and a small thrust washer holding the motor together now in order to take that clip off without losing it you might want to try putting a freezer bag around it and when it springs off, because they tend to have, they tend to fly off, you want to remove it with a small jeweler screwdriver and the bag will catch it. If not, at least it keeps it from being thrown to the floor. So 
So once removed, and you want to remove the small thrust washer, and you can just kind of pry that up with your um, X-Acto knife and use the tweezers to, to grab it. Save all that stuff, you're going to need it. The next thing is to pull the motor apart. Now that looks easier than it is. There's quite a lot of magnetic force holding it, and it's going to come, it's going to take you to put a bit of pressure to pull that off. And now we're ready to start removing the bearings. We got a bearing on the top, that's the bottom bearing. And you have a bearing on the top. Now before we go any further, what we want to do is put some tape on that, on the coils. So in case something slips, you're not going to tear into the insulation, the varnish, and ruin your motor completely. Now you can see how I'm using the socket and extension in order to support you know, the removal. Now you have to center that over the bearing. Now the, the 9 16 inch socket is larger than the bearing, the outside dimensions of the bearing. Because you, when you push the bearing through, you're going to want the housing to be supported, but you can't have it interfere with the uh, bearing itself as it's being removed. And as I said before, we're going to tape the coils to prevent in any accidental scratching. Now, because these bearings are the same size, you can't really get a tool in there to pull or push one of the bearings out. So the only way to do that is using your eighth inch drift, centering that housing on the extension, on the socket, and then you're gonna bang that out with a hammer. And, and it takes a bit of force to get it out. Although some are easy, some are difficult. It, it really is kind of iffy which, which ones are going to give you more trouble than the other. What you want to do is make sure you don't bang on one side. You want to alternate your positions and then you're going to bang. Now it's going to take a while. You go, you, you, you do some hammering and get a feel for whether it's coming out. This is by far the hardest part of the whole job. Now, the bearing hadn't come out yet. I'm gonna reposition it. I'm gonna make another attempt. And it could take you know, a few times before you finally get it to come out. All along, you wanna make sure that that is centered. The socket is centered. And now the bearing's out. Once that bearing is out, you can use a tool, that bolt, okay, and all you're going to do, you can see you've got to have the head, I have a washer on that, you don't really need that. If, you, if your head is smaller than the outside dimensions of the bearing, you're good. And that's going to go in, you're going to put a socket over that and you've got to make sure it's centered. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, put some markings on that tape so I know it's centered. So it's more of a visual cue for me as I tighten everything up to make sure that that's actually centered over the bearing because it gets hard to see at times. So you push the, bear, the, the bolt through. Here's where your fender washer needed to put pressure on that socket, smaller washer to help reduce the friction, and you're gonna tighten that up as much as you can, hand tighten. And here's with an Allen. The reason you need an Allen is you'll never get a wrench in there. So you need an Allen head bolt for this. Two inch, number 10. Works great. 
So now I'm gonna put a wrench on the end. I double check to make sure that that socket's centered over the bearing against my markings and then I'm just gonna twist it. And it'll take a little bit of force and you'll hear it go click and it will remove. You know, it, it does take some, some uh, strength. And it'll release and then continue removing it, tightening up on that screw, I mean on that bolt, and the bearing will, will come out. So now both bearings are out. What I want to do is clean the housing where the bearing sits with some tissue paper or some, you know, here I'm, I'm scraping away some, what looks like glue. Um, and then I'm just going to rub it out and remove anything from preventing the new bearings from being pushed in. You don't want any friction, you don't want anything, any debris in there because it's going to prevent the bearing from being seated properly. So here are the new bearings. You can see the listing below in the, um, the text below for the type. These happen to be uh, hybrid ceramic, okay? The outside is stainless steel and the balls are ceramic. We got those from Boca Bearing. Now what you're doing is you're taking the bearings on both sides. You can do them both at the same time. You want to make sure that they're perfectly square so when they go in they're going to go in evenly. So you take your time making sure that the bearings are in fact seated you know, correctly, that they're even. And then you're going to take your tool that bolt, you're going to put an old bearing or a washer that's the same identical size as the new bearing or slightly larger because you're going to use that to push the bearing in, the two bearings in. And you're going to make sure that everything seems to be straight. Again, you don't want to force the bearing in crooked. Use your wrenches. Now these will go in fairly easily. You'll feel some resistance, but not a lot. And if you take your time and you look, you make sure the bearings are in fact going in straight as you do this. And when they get in all the way, when they're both bearings are seated, it's going to be tight. You're not going to be able to turn the wrench anymore. So you know you're, you're done. You don't want to tighten it anymore because you don't want anything else to break. So once they get tight, so you can't turn it anymore with a, with a reasonable amount of force, you're done. And you take your tool off. You've just seated your two bearings. And you double check, make sure they're both flush with the surface. And then you can remove the tape. You want to be careful you don't rip anything, you don't want to destroy the coil, so you, know, you take your time peeling it off. Don't just rip it off, you might rip something you don't want ripped. Now I'm double checking the bearings, they look good, they're seated. And now I'm going to mount the, assemble the motor again. Now you want to keep your hands away from this because there's a significant amount of force and that's going to go on kind of like a mouse trap. It's going to, you're going to put it near it, you're going to get it lined up, and it's just going to pop in. Now, you want to replace the thrust washer and the C-clip. Here's the C-clip. So you want to get it mounted, you want to make sure it's above the 
washer and you're gonna press those on. Now if you can do it perfectly even, in this case I didn't, so I'm gonna reposition it. You get it so the forces are even when you squeeze it with the needle nose pliers. And then you're just gonna, it's just gonna pop in. Now to verify that it's actually in the groove, I take a small screwdriver and spin it. And as long as you can turn it, then you know you're in the groove. You can double check to make sure the washer is actually under it, just to be on the safe side. And that is that. Now it's a matter of reassembling the motor in the housing onto the arm. So you want to make sure you push the arm housing up and the motor down while you install the screws. And here's where the tread locker comes in. You want to reapply tread locker to the threads and tighten all four, all six screws. Four large ones, two small ones, two small, shorter ones go into the back. Here I sped up the video just because it's redundant. Now we're going to replace the dust shield. So I'll use my tweezers to get it in position. It's still tacky, so it's going to stick. And then I'm going to flatten it out with whatever. I, uh, in this case, I'm using the tweezers to actually rub against it and flatten it out. And that is it. Do the other three, and then test the motors. That's all, folks.